Hi, I'm Caitlin. And I'm Camille. And we spent our summer participating in the Military Tropical Medicine Health Grand Challenge Internship. We spent the last two weeks of June visiting different research, governmental, and nonprofit organizations involved in global health policy. It was an eye opening experience that really established the wide variety of players that are currently active in the global health field. From universities to nonprofits to various government departments, such as the Department of Health and Human Services and the Department of State, we were able to see the different angles from which these institutions approach global health. Some organizations, such as the Fogarty International Center, focus on supporting research, while others, such as USAID, focus on fieldwork. It was also very interesting to hear about the various motivations behind each group. For example, the Kaiser Family Foundation's researchers operate using an endowment rather than rely on grants, and as such are free to work on any topic that they deem to be currently lacking knowledge. In contrast, other agencies, such as the Department of State, had to work within their mandates, and the mandates do not always explicitly include global health. However, health and diplomacy are inexorably linked, and it was interesting to see how global health can be incorporated into other issues such as foreign relations and domestic security. This experience really emphasized that a wide breadth of knowledge and approaches are needed to address the current problems in global health. It was really a great opportunity to have visited so many institutions currently active in the field. For the month of July, we were students in a military tropical medicine course at the Uniform Services University of the Health Sciences. Through this course, we learned about a wide variety of infectious diseases, including many that I had never even heard of before. We even learned through both lectures and lab work how to diagnose and treat different diseases. In addition to the clinical knowledge, we also learned about the public health implications of these infectious diseases and the social, economic, and cultural factors which contribute to poor health. There were lectures on a variety of non-clinical public health concerns such as water sanitation, clean burning cook stoves, and food safety. There were even lectures on medical issues that I never considered to be relevant public health concerns such as dental and eye health. As undergraduates, this class gave us a rare opportunity to gain important clinical knowledge relevant to the field of health policy. The wide breadth of topics in this class gave a good overview of the current state of global health and further expanded our knowledge about current global health issues. It also laid the knowledge foundation for the next part of our internship. I have wanted to see what living in a resource-limited setting entails and to understand the implications this has for policy making. This summer, I finally had the opportunity to do so. In Peru, we participated in rounds of various Peruvian military hospitals and civilian clinics. We were able to meet with esteemed doctors and researchers who were hospitable and excited to share their own knowledge and experience. During our tours of hospitals in Lima and Iquitos, the jungle city of Peru, we saw a system of healthcare which relied on overworked doctors in the public sector. We watched as patients waited to be admitted into intensive care units which had already reached full occupancy. We encountered on our rounds a paralyzed but otherwise healthy HIV positive homeless patient who had not left the hospital in six years because he required supportive care which he could not find elsewhere. So health in Peru is not just a matter of access or of the quality of care, but rather that it is, as in any other country, inextricably anchored to a larger picture of social, economic well-being. In conversing with local researchers, we were able to better understand why data collection and disease surveillance is particularly difficult. In some of the poorer neighborhoods, locals distrusted healthcare workers and did not welcome their presence. We saw that this was less the case when the researchers were themselves Peruvian and had developed rapport with the community. We were fortunate enough to shadow a dengue surveillance team in Iquitos 
and we were pleasantly surprised by how willingly families allowed men with mosquito suctioning devices to enter their homes. Last but not least, while we were in Peru, we stopped by various post-disaster reconstruction sites and learned about the outcomes of certain public health interventions. From this experience, we learned that some interventions fare better than others and that when people feel responsible for communal progress, when they feel that they have a stake in their futures, they are much more likely to be proactive. We want to thank the Center for Health and Wellbeing for sponsoring this internship, Christina Graff for making this internship possible, and Dr. Blazes for mentoring us, creating this unique internship opportunity, and coming all the way to Princeton to watch this video. Thank, Thank you. Hasta luego.